everybody, and welcome back to the Wapet Book Club, Nine Years Phoenix, and once again, I am joined with my, my lovely co-host, Minho, uh, behind hello, the dumpster. <laughs> bit chilly out tonight, isn't it? Yeah, actually, as we are recording this, we got, like, the forecast called for it to heavy rain all day, like seven inches of rain, so we picked a bad yeah, time we're to... Just, yeah, yeah, we got a shower, and we get some free food in a dumpster. It's yeah. nice. Let's go. The hotel service is nice here. It's very good. Absolutely, it is. Five star. Five star dumpster. Yes. <laughs> but, um... So, the, the wheel picked me to, to lead us into misery, this 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 reading session. Oh, and, boy. Uh, I feel like you're going to enjoy this. We're bringing the, back... As a preface, I haven't seen it yet. Um, Phoenix hasn't showed me it yet. Yeah, I have yet to yet. press the enter button in the in our in the text box. But uh we've read this book before and whatnot, oh. so it's something familiar. Uh here you go. We're reading more Harvey X Reader. Oh uh, of course. We the left classic. off on a cliffhanger, dude. They the hooked classic. up and we don't know the repercussions. So we gotta we gotta keep going. That's true. We need some closure. Yeah, we can't just end the Harvey X reading trilogy with smut, man. We gotta keep going. Oh my god, you just- I was about to ask what happened last, <laughs> and uh, you just reminded me. I must have repressed it from my memory. And also, like, in between us reading this book from, like, now, from last time, there's been two story updates, so we, we gotta catch up, man. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, 35 and 34. Yeah, we're on chapter 17 right now. Okay, let me go to that. What kind of man? Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Now, this author is very dedicated to this. Yes, I mean, it's it's a beautiful book. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Better right. than the ones we've written so far, so... Well, are you telling me you don't love the Hero Brian X Reader? Part 2 and 1? Nonsense. That classic masterpiece? No. I cannot. I cannot believe you just said that. I mean, this is- this- I mean... Comparing it to the books that I've read on Wattpad in my lifetime, this is S-tier. <laughs> <laughs> it's S-tier to me compared to the, what, like, three months of Wattpad reading I've done? Yeah. You've been reading this shit for- um, I've had you for three months? <laughs> I- I just- Threw out a random number. I'm gonna have to look at our first recording and see, like, when it was uploaded, because, uh... Damn. <laughs> Alright, um... I can flip this standee, uh, thing that I just opened from my unboxing. Uh, you want to be the side that has all the cool shit, or the back side? That told me that it... What, what acrylic sandy this is. Uh, I want to be the backside because oh. I'm not cool enough. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, you should out of the way. All right, yeah. All right, I get to read first. Uh huh. How are we doing this? Are we doing like reading half and then pawning it off? Is that what we did last? Oh, it's true. This is a bit long too, so yeah, we can pawn it off. Yeah. One summer ago, Zuzu City. A place that we never get to see in in, in main game. <laughs> I wish we did. They allude to it so much as a, as a place. I wish that was in the actual game. Stardew Valley 2. Yep. It's like Overwatch 2, except way better. <laughs> City do Valley. You're you're canceling again? You sighed. Your tone frustrated. I knew you were wait. It. You knew what you were getting into when you started dating a stockbroker, he muttered dismissively. You should have been prepared to make sacrifices. Damn, what a- I don't like sacrifice. He's kind of an asshole. <laughs> also, like, how important is the stock market to this guy? <laughs> that he's gotta be on site 24-7. That's his job. Yeah, I mean, from what I know about the stock market, you can't- you don't know what's gonna happen to it. Like, yeah, it's just making very good predictions based yeah. off of yeah. But, you're basically yeah, you, gambling. Yeah, no. 
you can't know for sure. Yeah, you're basically gambling what you think has the highest chance of paying out the most. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> His eyes now fixated on you, dressed in, in outgoing attire, makeup on. You promised me after last time. I don't want to hear right now, Bill. I have work to do. He cut in, losing, loosening his tie whilst work walking into his office. You followed intently. Levi was your ex-boyfriend, a successful stockbroker and influencer. Like, he's an Instagram influencer. What <laughs> 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 loser? <laughs> Instagram, Instagram, uh, stockbroker influencer. Let's nice. go. He's like one of those. He's like one of those uh, alpha males that are like, this is what you do to get money. <laughs> oh, the Sigma males? Yeah, yeah. the Sigma males, yeah. <laughs> Levi was it. what is it? Epitome of success. Epitome. Epitome? I don't feel like that's how you spell epitome. It's just epi that's, yeah, I mean, it seems weird. <laughs> yeah, it's spelled epitome, but it is epitome. English is a whack language. Why would you silence the T? <laughs> I mean, pterodactyl. Oh, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Alright, epitome of success. With his designer suits, expensive watches, and a luxury car to match. He has always been obnoxious, even before you were dating. And his drive for success oft often came at the cost of your relationship. Despite that, you couldn't help but be drawn to him. His confidence and charm became a constant lore. He's still an asshole. <laughs> that didn't change anything. <laughs> Just you, compliments him and calls him an asshole at the yeah. end. I mean, like, I mean, that's what girls do all the time. They're like, oh, your necklace looks so cute. It would look. <laughs> but, like, it's like, that would look really cute with your dirty ass rags that you have. Great. <laughs> <laughs> it compliments your garbage bag. It's nice. like a backhanded compliment, basically. Uh huh. You met Levi when you both lived in Zuzu City. He hired you as his social media manager for his- I don't know. His Instagram! Until he is you, Instagram. Until you quit because of your involving relationship. No, don't you dare walk away, Levi, you scorned, watching him sit down at his desk. Levi let out- well, of course his name is fucking Levi. He let out a deep sigh, his eyes narrowing as he turned to face you. What do you want me to do, Bill? He asked, his voice tinging with annoyance. I can't just drop everything every time you want to go out. I'm not asking you to drop everything, you counter, feeling the anger beginning to rise at you. But it's always work, work, work with you. We haven't spent a proper evening together in weeks. Levi rolled his eyes. I'm sorry if my career is so inconvenient for you, he said sarcastically. But maybe if you had something going on for yourself, you wouldn't be so re reliant on me for your social life. That, okay. Ooh. This guy deserves to be bitch slapped. <laughs> this guy's trying to roast her. Yeah. This is a toxic relationship I've ever had. I've ever seen. Unhealthy, very healthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you raged at his words. I have plenty going on in my life, thank you very much. I'd like to remind you that I am the head of. The head what? The head of social media manager at some dive fashion brand? Big deal. Dive. It's Dive. Actually. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about with D-Bed? <laughs> <laughs> dive? Are we swimming now? Oh, I did I, I mean, that's how you spell dive. Th not my fault. <laughs> it actually might be dive. Who knows? Yeah. He cut in. Your eyes holding back waves of tears. But I thought we were in this together. I thought we were a team, you muttered. Your mind beginning to accept defeat. Levi leaned back in his chair, crossing his arms. We are a team, he said, his voice condescending. But sometimes sacrifices have to be made. I'm going out regardless, you stated, pulling back your tears, turning to face the door. No, you're not. I don't know who you're going with. Levi's voice was stirred, and you could see the frustration in his eyes. You rolled your eyes as his possessiveness, uh, as his possessiveness as he's in a snarky remark. I can go out with my friends if I want to, Levi. You can't- you don't get to control me. He shot back, feeling angry at- at his lack of trust in you. I don't trust your friends, he replied curtly, his eyes narrowing. I know what kind of people they are. You shook your head in disbelief. 
You don't know my friends, Levi. You're just making assumptions based on your own insecurities, you argued. Oh my god, this, going is at it. this is exactly what a controlling person does, where they, like, try to get in your head about how bad your friends are, so you cut contact and you don't have anyone to go to in emergencies. Oof. Levi stood up from his desk and walked over to you, grabbing your arms tightly. You need to understand, Bill. You're with me now, and that means you need to be careful about who you spend your time with. His words sent chills down your spine as you try to pull away from him. Let go of me, Levi. I can make my own decisions, you shouted, forcing your arm away from his grip. Jesus. We were in a very toxic relationship. It anyway, just goes to what to just toxicity. Yeah, I mean, this was, like, <laughs> old memories. Yeah. Anyway, where's, where's Dr. Harvey at? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good contrast. I mean, it's a good way to start a flashback, I guess. Yeah. I mean, we can see why she left the city. I mean, I guess it was already, like, told that she had a, an ex that, sh that she left and just left the city to get away from everything, but we don't know how bad it was. Hey, this explains why she wasn't committing. Yeah. You snap back into your thoughts. You felt your hand- your, wait, you felt your head pang and pang upon remembering your previous relationship. You knew you had escaped that relationship at the right time. Any later and you would have been in serious trouble. Oh my god, he was gonna kill us. Or, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't put it past Levi. <laughs> he had been controlling, demanding, and abusive towards the end of your relationship. You had tried to leave him multiple times, but he always managed to talk you into staying. It wasn't until you caught him cheating- OH MY GOD! Oh my god! That you finally this had man enough. done and did it. Yeah. And I'd taken a lot of courage to leave your family and city behind and start a new life on the farm. But you knew it was the right decision for you. The quiet and peaceful life of farming gave you the space and freedom to heal from your scars of your past relationship. You couldn't imagine going back to the hustle and bustle of the city life with the constant noise and stress. Living on your farm gave you the opportunity to slow down, appreciate appreciate the small things in life, and connect with nature, something you previously rarely ever did. Mm. Alright, I'm, I'm pawning this off on you now. Alright. Day four of winter. Wait, is it just, we're going back now? No, did we hook up with Harvey in, in like day two of winter? <laughs> Yeah, so this is like the con- wait. Yeah, we're continuing on, we're- So this is like current day now, right? Yeah, current day. Alright, day four of winter. Winter was in full swing. You had been keeping yourself busy in your farmhouse by reigniting your passion for your old hobbies such as painting, and as a result of that, you had invited Leia- Le Leia round to help you- help guide you. She was a calming presence, and her love for nature matched your own. How come your painting looks so much nicer than mine? You joked, smiling at Leia. Leia, smiled, uh, Leia laughed, shaking her head. It's not about whose painting looks better. It's about the process and enjoying it, she said, dipping her brush into the palette of paints. It had been a while since you had picked up a paintbrush, and it felt good to have someone to guide you. The two of you worked in comfortable silence, occasionally chatting about your lives and catching up on your busy lives. So, Leia, I saw you with Elliot the other day. At the saloon. Isn't that like your second favorite person? What, Elliot? Yeah. It, it is Elliot? That, that was the first guy I married when I played Stardew Valley for the first time. Oh, I see. Well, what made you go after him? He lived in a in a beach house? I like the <laughs> romance bit, you know? I, I love a man that can talk to me in words that I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Just marry someone foreign. <laughs> uh, you smirked. Leia blushed slightly. A sheepish, gr a sheepish grin spreading across her face. Yeah, we've been spending a lot of time together lately, she admitted, her eyes shining with happiness. That's great. I'm happy for you, you replied, a genuine smile on your face. You really shipped them both together. They suited one another. Actually, we have been dating... Leia mentioned. Your eyes widened in surprise, but your smile grew even wider seeing Leia so happy. Bitch, she took my wow. hand. <laughs> oh, you took hers. <laughs> no. <laughs> Crazy, I didn't do shit. <laughs> she called bibs. God damn it. You're right. <laughs> wow, I had no idea. Congratulations, Leia. 
I'm so happy for you two, you exclaimed, giving her a congratulatory, congratulatory hug in an overtop girly fashion. What does that even look like? I don't know. <laughs> an oh, overtop she... girly fashion. Oh, she gave us a nickname of Eve, but we're called Bill. No! <laughs> oh no. Thank you. Uh, Billy. <laughs> thank you, Billy. It's all still very new and exciting. Leia gushed, her cheeks turning pink. You couldn't help but feel a twinge of envy. Seeing Leia and Elliot happy together made you long for that kind of connection with someone. But you quickly pushed those thoughts aside, focusing on being happy for your friend. What Bro, about did you, you Billy? Did you forget that you just, like, hooked up with Harvey yesterday? Or, like, two days ago? At some age? Yeah. She's like, um, it just happened. Yeah. Just go back. Yeah, we're just friends. <laughs> yeah, you're just friends with some slight benefits. Yeah. <laughs> Emphasis on the slight. Yeah, just just the slightest bit. It, it's not even yeah, like slight. known. <laughs> what about you, uh, Billy? I've seen the way you have been looking at Harvey recently. Leia pride. You felt your cheeks redden. You took a deep breath before responding. I don't know what you're talking about, Leia. Harvey and I are just friends. Ha <laughs> ha You said, trying to downplay the situation. However, you couldn't help but feel a flutter in your stomach at the mention of his name. Leia arched an eyebrow at you, a playful grin on her face. Just friends, huh? Well, I happen to know for a fact that he's been asking around about you, she oh, said shit. slightly. Oh boy. Maybe they will risk it all and just be together in the public. Nah, this is one piece. Oh yeah, you're right. Gonna go on. It never this ends. Is... We haven't even gone on the uh, fourth arc yet. Yeah, it's gonna be a will they, won't they for the 1,000 chapters. <laughs> they're gonna get powers, they're gonna fight each other, <laughs> then they're gonna fall in love. And then their children are gonna fight each other, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your heart skipped a beat at her words, but you tried to play it cool. Oh, really? And what exactly has he been asking? You asked, trying to sound nonchalant. Leia chuckled. Asking if you have been managing okay and so forth, she said with a shrug. But it's pretty obvious that he's into you, Billy. She had no idea how into you Harvey actually was. In a moment of weakness, you gave in. I don't know, Leia. I don't want to mess up things between us, he said, your, heart, your, your voice hesitant. Leia gave you a sympathetic look. I get that, but sometimes you have to take a chance, Billy. Who knows? Maybe he's the one for you, she said encouragingly. He mulled over her words, the thought of taking a chance with Harvey both exciting and terrifying. But one thing was for sure. The idea of a future with him seemed more and more appealing with each passing day. Do you believe in the one? You sheepishly asked Leia. Your heart's dying. You're once a hopeless romantic that would do anything for love, but your previous relationships had currently or completely tainted your belief, leaving bitter taste in your mouth. Oh, that was a flashback. <laughs> That's flashback. how we, we knew what was going on and what she was referring to. This yeah. author's amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course, she beamed as she swiped her paintbrush across her canvas. Her answer surprised you, but also filled you with hope. Really? You asked, intrigued. Absolutely, Leia said with a smile. I think there's someone out there for everyone. Someone who will love and accept us for who we are, flaws and all. She paused for a moment before continuing. I mean, look at Evelyn and George. They have it together for years. He smiled and nodded, your hope reignited. Excited for the secret gift giving? Leia asked casually. The what? You replied, lost in thought. Every year you get given a random person and you have to give them a gift. And someone gets you one too, she beamed. So, like Secret Santa? He responded. She nodded. Your mind wandered off to who would get uh, as your gift receiver. You hoped it would be someone you knew well, but also someone you could surprise with a thoughtful gift. Hmm, I wonder what'll happen. Maybe, uh, maybe they'll get each other. Dude, that's gonna know. that's gonna be so cool if they do. <laughs> it's I feel like it's hinting towards that. Yeah. 
I mean, soon. The... I'm trying to think because, yeah. like, because the whole reason why they're scared of being together is because what would that look like of you dating your doctor, you know? But like, Leah is like encouraging it almost. Mm, so, free like, Medicare. Yeah. See, I, I, <laughs> I feel like in the story he definitely would. And, but in the game, he, like, does not... Even if you marry him, he still charges you when you pass out. <laughs> but, like... I mean, I feel like no one would give a shit. Because I feel like everyone knows about Lewis and Marnie's whole thing and whatnot. No, unless you're fucking blind and whatnot. So I don't think they'd give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Mm -hmm. Soon the evening fell and Leia left. You sighed as you looked at your painting. You had tried to paint Milo, but you weren't sure if the proportions were correct or not. Oh well, you said to yourself, as you headed to bed for the night. Morning. You woke to Milo licking your face. You opened your eyes to find him staring at you with his big brown eyes and his tail wagging excitedly. You giggled as you gently pushed him off, tickling his ear as he laid next to you. Milo let out a playful bark and jumped off the bed, waiting for you to follow. You chuckled and got up, stretching your limbs and glaring out the window at the falling snow. As you made your way to the kitchen, Milo followed you closely, wagging his tail in anticipation. You made yourself a cup of coffee and sat down on the couch, sipping it slowly and watching Milo as he played with his toys. You glanced at the calendar. The 14th was Harvey's birthday. You oh. immediately... Wait, like, December 14th? Yeah, well... I mean, in Stardew Valley, they just do the seasons by 28 days, so... Okay. Uh, you, meet, you immediately glance to your cupboard. Is it cupboard or cupboard? I always say cupboard. Okay, I, it's, it's probably cupboard. A cup board. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite board. Four cups. <laughs> uh, cup board, jug board. Yeah. Yeah. You immediately glance to your cupboard. Remembering the homemade wine you had put by yourself, buy for yourself, you walked over to the cupboard and opened it, scanning through the bottles until you found the one you were looking for. It was a bottle of homemade blueberry wine, which you had made during the summer with the fresh berries from your farm. You set it aside for that day. Ring, ring. I heard your telephone. Your telephone ring. You quickly rushed over to answer it. Good morning, Evangeline. Uh, I cannot believe you said that name. It's Bill. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, I gotta ring. Like, I gotta replace this right now. Yeah, I can't believe we were like almost done with this chapter and you fucked up. <laughs> uh, that's the first thing I did was make sure that thing said Bill. <laughs> was it? What was the last name? I have no idea. It was only brought up once. Viper? Yeah, her last name's Cypher, but I don't remember what her actual last name is. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Right. I'll replace it right now. Uh, okay. Good morning, Bill. A friendly voice spoke. You recognize the voice to be Emily's instantly. Good morning, Em. G good morning, Em. How are you? You spoke in a light tone, fiddling with the telephone cord. I just wanted to invite you to a little event I'm putting on tomorrow at the saloon. Ooh, I am intrigued, you smirked. It's what I am calling a midnight in winter, she spoke. Your mind racing with ideas of what it could be. Basically, it's a pre-Christmas celebration where we all dress up fancy and celebrate, she explained. You couldn't help but smile at Emily's enthusiasm. That sounds like a lot of fun. Count me in, you replied excited at the prospect of dressing up and enjoying a night out with your friends. Will everyone be there, you asked, your mind panning to Harvey. Everyone's invited, she replied, a cheerful tone in her voice. This could be a very interesting night. Hell oh, yeah. Oh my god, this will be our first time seeing him since we banged him. Well, I guess he banged us. Or he banged Bill. Not us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, a consensual bang. Yeah. Oh my god, it's not letting me go to the next part. <laughs> I'm just reading these comments. Oh yeah, spat my cola at out on my, my nose. Cola. At Love what part? Bread. Oh shit, okay. I finally went to chapter 18. Spat my water out. 
I mean, it was probably at one of the- they probably commented on a certain paragraph. Maybe- All maybe right. it was about Levi being an asshole, who knows? Every single time I hear Levi, I just keep thinking about... Levi Ackman? Titan, Levi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, that matches. It's like, this guy's gloomy and he's mad all the time. Yeah, he's an asshole. Yep, that's Levi Ackerman. It's canon in this story. I think story. he's a good fighter. Yeah. Oh my god, that's all! <laughs> what? You said he's a good fighter. He's abusive in this story, man. Oh god, no. Okay, maybe he's a bad fighter. <laughs> yeah, like, you almost made me choke on my fry. <laughs> <laughs> really caught me off guard. You were what like, yeah, he probably knows asked... how to throw a punch. <laughs> what if he just asked her to spar all the time, like, hey, let's just fight. Yeah, let's fight. Bang. And then bruises. Ah, uh, you're so weak. <laughs> Jesus. That's so fucked up. <laughs> yeah. uh, good evening, miss. Alright, chapter 18. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Is there any more flashbacks? <laughs> I don't oh. think so. Maybe not. All I could think, what all I could think about was you woke up was wait, <laughs> wait a minute. All you could think about as you woke up was tonight. Thank God. Nice, <laughs> you got it. Yay, a battle for me. <laughs> you passed the dyslexia test. Thank you. I like to thank my mother. She she pulled me from my classes to make sure I knew how to say certain letters, and I still don't know how to. So really appreciate that, mom. <laughs> Wait, she pulled you from classes? Yeah, I was having trouble saying certain letters, so I, me and like three other kids from different classes got pulled so we can learn how to speak properly. It's a real well, what thing. What grade was this? Was it like elementary? First grade. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what? Well, I, I, no, I got put in the gifted class. <laughs> fuck you. Uh, oh, oh, oh. No, no shit. You got put in the gifted classes. <laughs> I was like the dumbest one out of the gifted class. I'm like, why am I here? Self-deprecation never fails. I was actually wondering, because, like, there's just literally people who just study math their whole life in there. I'm just like, why am I here? I just play slightly above average. These kids could smoke me in any test. Yeah. You just barely, like, they had, like, another opening. You were the next in line. They're like, oh, I guess we can move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, all right, who's our next worst uh, yeah. student? All right, we, this kid. We need a challenge person to make sure that we uh, <laughs> name the, the kids right. That, that way uh, we show that he was like... He looked pretty challenged. Yeah. <laughs> <God> <laughs> Alright, read. I'm trying, you're making me laugh! I couldn't help but wonder what kind of decorations Emily would choose for it, knowing she was one, of, one for being creative and imaginative. Would it be a winter wonderland themed or something more festive and uh, colorful? What's that a midnight through? So I'm, diff I'm definitely thinking... Wasn't it called Min a Midnight Christmas? So maybe like some little dark blues, have a little bit of like those five, like those, uh, what are they called? The fairy lights on the ceiling and just a little couple of like hollies. I feel like that would do it. I'm a designer. Yes. Uh, you're out here, yeah, I was gonna say, you're out here designing stuff, huh? Yeah, I learned from Maybe Animal you should uh, draw for this. No. <laughs> I don't know how to draw for shit. I found myself pondering about what to wear for the occasion. I have brought a, a oh, a plethora read, of dresses Ooh. with you. Plus one, plus one. Oh, plus one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to the valley. As you indicated, it, oh, indulge in retail therapy a lot whilst living in the city. You rummage through your hangers in your closet. Yeah, what specific dress in mind? There you saw it. A helter neck navy dress. Satin material. You ran your fingers over its curves. And put it, put it out of the closet. It held. Wait. You held it up to your figure in the mirror. You had originally bought this dress for an after work event, but this occasion seemed much more fitting and also a lot more fun. As the day wore on, you found yourself counting down the hours until this event. You were eager to have fun with your friends and dance the night away, but part of you was also excited to, for Harvey to see you all dressed up. All in all, you were certain. You were certain it was going to be the night to remember. You praised to your oh, you promised to yourself to not get too drunk so you could remember everything the next morning. <laughs> Finally, evening fell and you started to get ready. You chose to do minimum 
glamour makeup look. Admiring a red lip. You curled your hair and powdered your cheeks. You looked a you looked a far cry to your normal attire of overalls and muddy boots. You wrapped the jacket around your shoulder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, around your shoulders and headed to the door, slipping into your Patton heels? I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a heel type. Heels. Yeah. You hadn't looked so glamorous since the city, and you realize how much you miss feeling that way. You stepped out of your cozy home, bracing yourself for the chilly night air. The crisp winter air made you shiver as you made your way down the street towards the saloon. As you approached the building, the warm glow of the, the lights from the window beckoned you inside. You pushed open the door and stepped into the lively atmosphere of the saloon. Oh. Fuck, my heating pad. <laughs> 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 The chatter and laughter filled the air as you made your way in. Emily rushed up to you, giving you a massive hug. You returned it, squeezing her with in her red sakin dress. I, I don't know what the fuck sakin is, but I don't know either. You, you rock that shit, girl. <laughs> I'm looking it up because I'm curious. I know it's probably a type of material like like cotton and like velvet. Sakin is a small, typically shiny, generally disc-shaped ornament. Oh, it's like those, like, glittery dresses with, like, plastic discs on them. Let's go. I'm glad you came, she beamed, holding your shoulders. You look stunning, my darling, she explained. You've outdone yourself, Em, you beamed. Stunned at the way Emily had decorated the saloon and gave it a new life. Others noticed you come in. Some looked visibly shocked of how well you scrubbed up. You walked over and greeted Robin, then Gus, who was happy sip. Happy sipping his whiskey with Mayor Lewis. And finally, Haley and Lee. Le- I almost said the a friend's name. <laughs> Leah. Oh no. Who look comp- com- who both complicated how gorgeous she looked. Haley's dress was gorgeous. A light pink mini dress complemented her complexion perfectly. Her hair was styled with loose waves, and she had added a pink of color to her lips too, making her look even more radiant. On the other hand, Leah had opted for a more classic look, wearing a matching blazer and trousers set in a dark brown hoop. She paired the outfit with simple white blouse and black pointed toe, pointed toe heels, completing the look with a sleek ponytail and subtle makeup. The overall effect was stunning and reminded you of your days working at the top offices of Zuzu City. You know, I have a feeling that this altar is, uh, is female. Discard by this. Uh, You're telling this me that this person with the profile of a of a of a of the, whatever I can't fucking I messed up the thing. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like she's. They female. made a custom like, profile in the Sardi Valley like character select. I feel like they're a girl. True. <laughs> or a really feminine wondered, man. That was like. Three paragraphs. No, it was like two paragraphs of description. Mm-hmm. Well, you gotta like know how, how the fit is, dude. How long does it take for like a girl to do makeup? I've always wondered. I mean, it is takes it like me thirty hour? minutes. Thirty minutes. Yeah. I mean, I only do that for like once in a blue moon special occasions or cosplay. <laughs> yeah, th- th- there are two moons. There are, there are two wolves inside me. <laughs> Isn't that... This once in a blue moon is the same as cosplay, unless you cosplay every other day. Nah, I mean, I don't <laughs> I do not do that. I used to, but nah, not anymore. Dang. You're practicing. Yeah, I mean, I only do cosplays for conventions now. And then a couple of, like, little, like, if we do, like, costume parties, I'll, like, show up. <laughs> oh, yeah. In my best fit. But then, the, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we need more nights like this, he mentioned. We do, Haley beamed. I love dressing up like this. I used to dress up like this in the city, but those days are over, you added. What did you actually do in the city? Leah asked, realizing you hadn't really told anyone about your life before the alley. I used to be head of social media marketing for a few companies. I jumped from one to another, he casually explained, not wishing to discuss all the details. Was it hard? Haley smiled, taking a sip of her cocktail. Not really, 
you basically follow this the same plan every time and just change it depending on the campaign. I can't even imagine working in an office all day, Leo said, shaking her head. It's not for everyone, that's for sure, he agreed, recalling the long hours spent at your desk, staring at the at a computer screen. Haley, however, had a different approach. I would love to visit the city one day, Haley said, twirling the strand of her blonde hair in her finger. You should definitely come with me one day. I can show you around, you offered, feeling excited at the thought of returning to the city with a new friend that wasn't a stuck-up asshole. Maybe and she we're can that uh, about... hook her up with Levi. <laughs> no! <laughs> Not that, man. Where the fuck is Harvey? <laughs> <laughs> You were chatting with your friends. Your eyes wander around the room. Oh, look at that. I'm trying to, like, just like Bill, I'm trying to figure out where the fuck Harvey is right now. Look around the room, taking in the lively atmosphere in the beautiful decorated space. That's when you notice him. Harvey was stood next to the bar with Shane and Elliot, uh, nursing a glass of whiskey. His eyes met yours. Harvey looked dashing in his black suit. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Every time, hold on. <laughs> the, the fabric hugged his toned body perfectly, emphasizing the, the his broad shoulders and waist. The crisp white dress shirt he wore underneath was unbuttoned at the collar, giving a hint of his chiseled chest. The Boy. dark green tie around his neck added a touch of sophistication in yes. his overall I'll look. Want. Yeah! <laughs> Plus two. He was your image of perfection. You felt your heart skip a beat as you tried to compose yourself. You walked to the bar to get a drink, excusing yourself at the conversation. Harvey noticed and followed you. Towering next to you. Alright, I'm pawing this off on you now. Uh, I just love, as you just see the dialogue, you hand it off to me. Yeah, I mean, it's halfway. Uh... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I had to scroll down to see how much was left. Okay. Allow me, he instructed, offering to pay for your drink. Okay, then, he smiled. Harvey seemed to quickly study you. You are an image of perfection, he quietly spoke. You felt your cheeks flush at Harvey's compliment, his words sending a shiver down your spine. You couldn't help but steal a glance at him. How do you expect me to keep my hands off of you and my heart empty, Van? Uh, wait. It's Bill. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> and my heart empty, Van. Uh, <laughs> and my heart empty, Bill. He sighed, his eyes gazing longingly into yours. I don't. You replied simply. But thank you, Harvey. He smiled, feeling a bit flustered. You look very dapper yourself, he added, admiring how the color of his suit brought out the intensity of his eyes. Okay, yeah, it's just gonna be like freaking sexual tension in the air now. <laughs> no, it's literally that was just last chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey chuckled. I clean up nicely, don't I? He raised his glass to you in a toast, his gaze never leaving yours. To a beautiful evening and even more beautiful company, he said. Taking a sip of his drink. Smooth, smooth. <laughs> However, with a clink of his glass, Emily stood on top of a chair to make an announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming here tonight, she exclaimed, her voice hurried in anticipation. I have some news to behold to you. You and Harvey glanced at one another, curious with what it could be. Leah and Elliot are engaged, huh? she being. <laughs> they did it. Didn't they just start dating, like, a few days ago? I don't know, maybe they skipped some nights by sleeping. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they just skipped some days, like yeah. we did. The whole saloon erupted in loud applause. Your jaw dropped. You looked over to Harvey, his face mirroring your own surprise and excitement. You saw Leah smile when Elliot gazed longingly at his fiance. He felt as if you had missed a few chapters, as only a couple of days ago, Leia had mentioned they had just started dating. Thank you now you. knew. <laughs> you now knew. I mean, they just got into it, I don't know. Yeah. There's, it's a Disney love story, who knows. Yeah. 
You now knew they had been dating more than a couple of days. As the applause died down, Emily continued with a smile. To celebrate this wonderful news, let's all raise a glass to this happy couple. Everyone raised their glasses, clinking them together in a toast to Leah and em Elliot's future together. After the toast, Emily descended from the chair, and the party continued with even more energy than before. You ran over to Leah, engulfing her in a long hug. You sneaky lady, you beamed. I am so happy for you. Thanks. Wait, why does thanks have an apostrophe in it? Uh, for thanks. Emphasis. Thanks, Bill. She couldn't contain her excitement as she passionately hugged back. You have some explaining to do, young lady, he chuckled as you pulled away. Leia's eyes widened with curiosity. What do you mean? she asked, tilting her head slightly. You never told me you were engaged, you exclaimed, a playful smirk on your face. Leia blushed and looked down, but you could see the happiness radiating from her. It was a bit out of nowhere, she replied shyly. Oh, Leia, Haley interjected, joining the conversation. We want to hear everything. Leia giggled and took a sip of her drink before launching into the story of how Elliot proposed. She described the perfect day they had spent together, going on a hike in the mountains and having a picnic by the Syrian lake. As she spoke, her eyes lit up and her hands gestured excitedly. And then, just as the sun was setting, he got down on one knee and pulled out the ring. She finished with a happy sigh. You and Haley squealed in excitement and pulled Leia into another hug. Alright, you gotta do the squeal, so the immersion is uh, here. I need a squeal? Alright, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if they'll pick up on the thing. You really squeal in excitement. You gotta do like a happy squeal when like <laughs> girls get together, and then they hear like a marriage story. Alright, I'll, I'll see if it picks up right. on the mic. Yeah, yeah, I'll say I'll say the sentence and then you gotta squeal. Alrighty. Alright, you and Haley squealed in excitement and pulled Leia into another hook. That even pick up? <laughs> <laughs> no. Damn it! I think it's too right. high pitch. I think it's not gonna pick up. <laughs> All right, you gotta go one octave lower. All right, I'll go again. You and Haley squealed in excitement and pulled Leia into another hug. <laughs> that did that hit? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of slightly heard it. Yeah, I had to like back away. That way, it wouldn't be too close to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> that is so romantic! You exclaimed. You continued to chat and drink, somewhat breaking your previous promise to yourself. When the music began to blast, you found yourself lost in the beat, dancing with the fellow townsfolk who were celebrating Leia's engagement. That's when you had the worst idea of the night. Hey, Haley, look! You exclaimed excitedly, climbing onto a table. Oh god. You jumped up, catching the attention of a couple of townsfolk around you. You began to dance to the music that you recognized from your youth. Haley cheering you on. Harvey watched you from across the room, eagerly keeping an eye on you, knowing your drunken track record. <laughs> uh, and he was right, too. Putting too much of your weight onto the edge of the table, the platform suddenly gave away from underneath you, sending, sending you straight to the floor. You hit your head on the edge of the table your way down, oof, <laughs> causing a searing pain at the back of your skull. You tried to sit up. Dude, that's a concussion blow right there. Ow. Yeah. You tried to sit up, but you were met with a feeling of dizziness. Haley rushed to your side alongside Marty and Abigail, who were nearby, asking if you were alright. Bill, are you okay? Haley exclaimed. You just <laughs> groaned in response. That's when my head Marty hit the wall. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Marnie Marty quickly rushed over to the doctor, his medical expertise now needed. Harvey rushed over to you, quickly bending down to tend to you as you sat face down. Bill, can you hear me? He asked gently, instantly scanning your head for the injury. Doctor's instinct was kicking in. Uh, yes, you muttered, feeling embarrassed and flustered. Your mind disoriented. Maybe you should get some fresh air, Haley added, looking to, the doc looking to Dr. Harvey for a response. Bill, are you able to stand up for me? He questioned, his hand stroking your arm. Yes, yes. You grabbed onto Harvey as you tried to pull yourself up, assisted by Haley. You leaned against him, feeling his warmth and stability grounding you. Oh, this is all a ploy. Uh, she got herself drunk so uh, Harvey could 
pick her up. Ah, oh, I see. Oh my god. Big brain. Big brain. As you walked outside. <laughs> yeah, not her. <laughs> As you walked outside, the cool night air hit your face, and you took deep breaths, trying to clear your head. You're bleeding, Harvey said, noticing the trickle of blood on the back of your head. What? You reached back to touch it, feeling the stickiness of the blood uh, on your fingers. Oh, great. Harvey helped you stick, sit down on a bench outside and took out his handkerchief from his pocket, gently dabbing at the wound. Dab. I need to get you into the clinic to examine the wound. He insisted, your face falling. I really don't need it. I'll be fine, you sighed, not wanting to miss the party inside. Mm. I insist. As your doctor, he replied, his expression looking somewhat frustrated beside concern. You groaned inwardly, knowing there was no use arguing with Harvey when he was in doctor mode. Reluctantly, you nodded in agreement and let him let him lead you to the clinic. You had made another drunken mistake. Oh, damn. Uh, Is this going to be more smut? Uh, oh, I know it's not. Damn it, I got excited when I saw the author's note at the very beginning. <laughs> Looking at these comments. It's all like the no shit Sherlock, and it was like, no. this comment may be offensive. <laughs> oh, this says the S word. She is so embarrassing. Glad this isn't a Y N. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a Y N. This is a Bill Cipher X. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kicking my feet and giggling. Yeah. That's so embarrassing. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Alright, chapter 19, priority. Are we gonna get some romance going on in the doctor's office? Also, this one's supposed to be a lot shorter, apparently. Okay, yeah, we can read. We can end on this chapter, then. Yeah. I'm currently in the midst of uni essays, apparently, according to the author. I mean, this is in the past. They're no longer in uni essays. They've What's you? Oh, university. Yeah. You walked with Harvey towards the clinic. You couldn't help but feel disappointed that you had to leave the party early. I mean, the be fair, girl. You are bleeding and might have a concussion. <laughs> Most likely. Most likely have a concussion. <laughs> Just saying. Maybe listen to the man. <laughs> Where the fuck? Oh yeah, you were having fun with your friends and having a good time. But now all you can think about was the throbbing pain in the back of your head. Oh shit, because you're bleeding. Dumbass. <laughs> Harvey led you inside the clinic and sat, sat you down at the examination table. He took a closer look at the wound and cleaned it up before applying some antiseptic cream. He winced at the t as he touched the sore spot, but you knew he was just doing his job. Take these painkillers. They will numb you pain from the injury, Harvey said, handing you two pills and a glass of water. You place both of your both on your tongue, one after the other, and swallowed the, the tablets. You paused afterwards. Harvey looked visibly stressed as he typed on his computer. What's wrong? You asked without thinking. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Harvey sighed, looked up from his computer screen to meet your eyes. I can't keep you safe, Bill, and you seem to put yourself in situations where the injury is voidable. He spoke, his tone frustrated. You were taken back from his words, feeling as if you were being told off. For having fun. I mean, to be fair, this was completely avoidable. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I just thought of. I just thought you would have learned the lesson from the previous time. He sighed, looking over the wound again. I was just having fun, he mumbled, diverting your gaze away from Harvey's. There's a vast difference between having fun and acting irresponsibly. How do you think it would feel if you hurt yourself badly and I couldn't? He began. What? Save me? He shot back, feeling like a total burden. I'm sorry I make you do your job. Oh. Oh, oh my god. What? No! What is- Your tax dollars. Bill, I'm about to slap you in the ass right now. Like, in the face. <laughs> the ass? Yeah. Sorry. I meant to- I was like combining <laughs> two phrases of I'm about to slap you in the face and you're being an asshole. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> 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 that 
that is not something you should combine together. Anyway. <laughs> you explained the alcohol prevailing your emotions, tears welling in your eyes. It was an accident. I was caught up in a good feeling, he muttered towards the end. Sorry you have to constantly save me. I'm sorry, okay? Harvey looked shocked. Months of suppressing an unknown about of emotions from the days in the city, and you finally blown its roof. Is that all I am to everyone? A burden? Your drunken words stumbling across the room. Harvey sighed of guilt, making you feel this way. Okay. Oh, I gotta get into this of being a man, okay? <laughs> no, no, honey. Harvey began, moving his chair towards you. I didn't mean that, he sighed taking your hand into his. Your safety is a priority to me, because whether or not you like it, you're a priority to me. He weakly smiled, your mind calming at his words. I am? You asked quietly. Yes, he smiled. The guilt of your emotions set in. You didn't realize how badly you had snapped until you saw Harvey's sunken face. It's true. In the city, you had felt like a burden to everyone close to you, especially to your family and ex. You didn't want to feel like that again. And... It was partly the reason you left to begin with. It was it was the thought of Harvey thinking of you like that that scared you. Why am I such an idiot? You sighed. I'm sorry. You apologize. Feeling very embarrassed for getting so worked up. You seem to be a very clumsy, drunk pulpit, but it doesn't make you an idiot. Harvey asked, added, smiling, taking off his medical gloves. You grin weakly, appreciating his attempts of lightening the mood. Uh, where'd it go? <laughs> Thanks for caring about me, Harvey. <laughs> you said, generally grateful for his compassion. Don't say thank you, he replied. Just please be more careful, Bill. You seem to have a habit of getting yourself injured in some horrific yet avoidable way. He chuckled, letting go of your hand. I'm sorry. I just always had a filter when I was in the city, and I guess that filter was coming off now and I can't control it. He muttered, feeling bad about worrying Harvey and making him work out of hours. He's like, <laughs> he even charges you for this. <laughs> Free healthcare. Yeah. <laughs> Harvey nodded, and you could see the subtle concern in his eyes. Just promise me that you'd be more careful from now on, okay? I can't have you getting hurt. You're not in agreement, feeling a wave of guilt wash over you. I promise. I'll try to be more mindful of my actions. How are you feeling? Harvey asked, looking straight into your gaze with his piercing eyes. Better, he replied, feeling the energy shift between you two. Let's get back let's get you back to the party then, he st he stood, offering you his hand from the table. You smile, taking his hand in yours. A feeling in which wait, a feeling which sent waves of electricity through your body upon remembering the night you spent together. But no more alcohol, and I recommend you don't dance on any more tables. <laughs> Aww. Alright. Oh wait, this is the end of it. I was about to be like, and it's off to you! I can read the rest. I mean, it's only like four paragraphs most. I got it. Alright. I don't see dialogue, so I'll just use like a announcer voice or something. Uh, morning. Harvey had walked you home from the party. Towards the end, you had sobered up and your headache had faded. You apologized to Haley for being a drunken idiot, and she had just giggled and told you not to think twice about it. You examined your wound as best as you could in a mirror. It seemed to be okay as it had scabbed over. Wait, was it a head wound? Yeah. Right? It was a scab on your- it's Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> you walked downstairs to your living room. A note on your nightstand caught your eye. You walked over to it and picked it up, unfolding it to read the message inside. It was from Leia. Thank you for being there. Or thanking you for being there for her on her celebration. Expressing how much your friendship meant to her. Yeah, dancing on her table and getting drunk and passing out and giving her a concussion. Let go. <laughs> Maybe your drunken idiot idiocy wasn't the worst thing in the world after all. Maybe not. <laughs> I love this comment that just says, Evelyn, I swear to every god that exists. 
There's no spaces in between it. You gotta read it like eventually. I swear to God, everything that exists. Yeah. <laughs> um. This is amazing. I love this book so much. <laughs> it's pretty well written. Pretty yeah. well written. Yeah. Aren't you glad you got to read again? Yes. Yeah. Gotta finish it. Yeah. Season four, One Piece. <laughs> We're never gonna finish this, man. We're on like either six or seven of these. I'm gonna pass away before I finish this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fucking die before we finish the RPG. The author's kid's gonna continue like writing this. They're like, they're like, hey guys, just quick and authors know my mom is dead, but she left behind all the notes for the series, so I have a couple ideas of so what to do <laughs> afterwards. So just stay tuned. <laughs> and then if I ever get kids, I have to tell them as my last will, you have to finish Harvey X Reader. B. Make your kids read Wattpad. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, it's a never-ending cycle on the channel of people having to read the Harvey X Reader book <laughs> until never be finished. <laughs> All right. Well, this this was a good one. But now That's it's good. time for us to figure out what we're going to do next time. The wheel. The wheel! <laughs> On the wheel of fortune. Pat and Penning. <laughs> Don't All you right. love it's still Christmas? It is. Yeah. Well, winter, so. Yeah, yeah, winter, winter, yep, yep. All right. I, winter ends when February starts. That's just me, though. Yeah. When, um, what, are you, what are you hoping it lands on? Um, anything but writing your own, because I need creativity, and you don't have creativity. Uh, a rock brain. Alright, let's see. I swear. So sun, so sun, so sun, so sun. Yay! We're Let's go. That's a win in my book. That is a good one. I can bring back my Daphne voice and my my Velma voice. Perky. Oh yeah, you can- yep. Yeah. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> I get to traumatize my audience, aka Derpy, by doing my- <laughs> my Daphne voice. Your Daphne voice just sounds like a preppy girl voice. I mean, that's what Daphne is. Are you gonna exactly. tell me that she isn't? Like, I no. cannot believe the assumptions that you're throwing at me right now. I can't even. I do your Velma voice now. Um, actually, it is in chapter 14 that, uh, <laughs> that Harry <laughs> and Bill, uh, sleep together. It, it is written right here in the epilogue. <laughs> uh, actually, page 14, uh, of Law 32, line 7, reads that... <laughs> this isn't, uh... <laughs> well, we try to remember the thing. This is in, a uh, violation of my Fourth Amendment rights. Uh, I have the right to... <laughs> I don't actually know the fourth amendment. <laughs> <laughs> We're just making Velma into Karen. Yeah. Actually, I have the right to own 15 assault rifles because of the second amendment, which is the right to bear arms, and I have a lot of arms. <laughs> She's like a Karen that actually knows her rights because she reads. Yay! I mean, to be fair, Velma knows a bookworm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, aren't you very excited? I can't wait to read more Scooby-Doo. Oh, Scooby-Doo-Doo! You get to do Shaggy again. You get to do a basic voice for Fred. Uh, you get to do a basic voice for uh, that one dude, uh, Ravi. <laughs> Ravi? Yeah, yeah, that's what we named the YN. Why, why are there like, so many characters for no reason? Huh? There were like different characters, like every single time a new character popped up, I'm like, okay, I have to like do some voice now. Yeah. I can't wait till a country looking guy comes in and I can just do my little country accent. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, well, you don't see like you're from around these parts. <laughs> Where you think you're going, fucker? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of a nice word, but this is not a nice <laughs> I gotta just embody Striker from Hell of a Boss if I ever do a country accent. You gotta. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty, well, thank you for joining me, man. It, this was a nice evening behind the Walmart dumpster. 
Yeah, it was nice. We got some good food. Um, the weather's cooling down now, so maybe we'll get some hypothermia while we're at it. Oh, fuck yeah, my favorite. Oh, yes. Dude, we should actually have a podcast like that where we just chill behind dumpsters and just have random conversations. This will just be like a freaking uh, podcast where we're just shivering the whole time so that they don't even know what we're saying. Yeah. We, like, it's 15 minutes and then we're just like, alright, we're just gonna go do this in the car. It's too cold out here. <laughs> <laughs> alright, well, check out the playlist for more Wattpad book club readings. Um, I guess stay tuned for more Scooby-Doo. Stay tuned. Yay. Scooby-Doo. 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 Bye! Bye-bye.